Hi, I'm Rich Miller. At Virtua, we believe citizens need to be informed about the important health care issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support health care programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by PNC Bank, Felician College, Virtua, MagnaCare, New Jersey Sharing Network, dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation, the Russell Berry Foundation, and by Choose New Jersey. Our mission is attracting companies to the Garden State. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. You see, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Steve Adubato here at the great New Jersey Performing Arts Center. Uh, you see this logo right here. NJTV, that's New Jersey's public television station. We're here at NJPAC because this is uh, celebrating the fourth anniversary of NJTV. It's our second gala uh, for the network, NJTV. It's a great night. Joe Piscopo is our MC. John Pizzarelli performed great stuff. Uh, we honored two pioneers in public broadcasting, Kent Manahan and the terrific Michael Aaron, the dean of the State House Press Corps. We got to talk to some of the great supporters, the funders of public television, the people on NJTV News who make it happen. Uh, with Mary Alice Williams, our nightly anchor. It was a great night here for public broadcasting, for NJTV, the public television station in the state of New Jersey. A great night, New Jersey. A great night for NJTV. We're here with Neil Shapiro. Everyone's been singing the praises of uh, NJTV. But Neil, back in July of 2011, I always ask you this, um, is this what you envisioned back then when you started it all? You know, I have to tell you, this is so much better than I envisioned it when we started. <laughs> really? I thought it was going to be a big challenge. I'm gratified where we are. We can go further. But I'm delighted about the progress we've made in four years. The parts you're particularly pleased and proud of? I think the team that we've assembled, I think having independent producers like you and the team we've assembled at NJTV, I think we're actually serving Jersey in a way that maybe hasn't been served in a long time. How about that news operation? I'm thrilled with them. They're such professionals. They really hustle all the time. And I think if you want someone that will cover the length and the breadth of the state, NJTV is the place to do it. Finally, as the gala is, uh, as gala is about to begin, one more quick question. Moving to Newark, big deal. Huge deal. Oh, it's going to be at a great glass studio so people can sit and watch us do it, just like today's show, only Jersey. If you watch NJTV News, uh, you know the young lady I'm uh, about to introduce, uh, Mary Alice Williams, is our brand at NJTV. TV and we're proud to have her anchoring our news every night. How much do you love it? I am having such a blast. These are such smart, enthusiastic, nice, collegial people. It's an, it's an extraordinary team. And I keep saying, if you like what we do, it's because of the team. And you know, the idea of, we're, we're actually at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center right now, this gorgeous place. And, and the operation, the NJTV operation is coming here to Newark. How exciting is that? It's going to be wonderful. The people at WNET have been very kind to us, and in our, we've been the diaspora, so we've been sort of spread out. But we're looking forward to being in one place all together working um, on projects, so that'll be more fun. For those who don't really understand or appreciate what a news operation takes, and I talked to Phil Alonji, the executive producer of the news, about that, but as the anchor, as the person who's also kind of pulling things together on the editorial side as well, what is that like for you and the rest of the team? You know, I have a different view of anchoring than most people. I do write the show myself, but my job is to represent everyone, the graphics department, the field shooters, and field reporters, of course, and all of the people it takes to the unit managers to put this show together. What do you mean represent them? My job is it's the end game. I get to put their stuff on the air, and I better be sure I'm representing them the way they deserve to be represented. And finally, this gala raising a significant amount of money for public broadcasting, for NJTV, for NJTV News. What would you say to those who say, well, you know, you don't need me. And again, we're not going to turn this into a fundraiser, but that doesn't just happen, that program. 
It doesn't, and it's we, we operate on a shoestring. It's not as though we're spendthrift in any way, but understand that there is, we're doing something that's unique in all the world. Ben Franklin said at the Continental Congress, New Jersey will be a mere apostrophe between Philadelphia and New York. And so it has been from a media perspective. This is an extraordinary state with enormous economic clout and enormous economic potential. And uh, very smart, highly educated, involved, engaged people. And that's the kind of show we're doing. We're aiming at, at them. We can't do this. It's brand new, and we can't do it without your support. So we're really grateful for any help we can get. Two stars of the night, uh, Joe Piscopo and uh, John Pizzarelli. First of all, how did we get you, Joe? You know what? I owe you a big favor. That's how we did that. This guy does my, he does my he does Everything's my, favors in New Jersey. my radio show. You're great on the radio. Thank you. And they love you. And so Steve said, you know, you believe in this NJTV, man. I came in and I wanted to support it. But you know what? Let's I'm, talk about this guy. How do we get this guy, John know, Pizzarelli, the best? Joe way. called me. And I knew. <laughs> so hold on. Let me get this straight. One Italian guy calls another Italian guy who calls another Italian guy. It works it, in Jersey. It, it works it, 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 come on. Well, but, you, but, you're a big star. What no, are you no, doing I'm doing not, the I'm interview not, here today? Let me, uh, no, 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 we're, we're doing a special, in fact, on tonight. The making of the NJTV Gala. John, let me ask you this. We had you and your dad. You remember right here in, in NJ, um, New Jersey Performing Arts Center. That was a great interview for us. What's it like for you to be together with a public television family? Oh, it's thrilling because uh, I know what public television means to the community and everybody watching it and all that. So to be part of this uh, evening is really special, especially with all you gentlemen, too. But public television's everything. You know. and the other thing is, uh, Joe Piscopo won't say this, but uh, I will. We, uh, the folks at public television, NJTV, WNET, our partners, um, did a great special on the Italian-Americans of New York and New Jersey, and Joe Piscopo was a part of that. And I know you got a lot of feedback on that, Joe. Talk about that and how proud you were to be a part of that. Yeah, I'll talk about tonight from the podium, Steve. It's like where my, my mother was born blocks from here, man. You know, my daddy was brought up Mount Prospect Avenue, and it was all strong. You know, and you guys, the Autobottos from the North Ward, what your family has done, it's all about the heritage and the community. So I'm so proud to be here, man, you know, to be here. at, at this. My grandfather would never believe and Jay Pack. Yeah. The, but who else would have put that on the air other than public television? I know, I know. Hey, the Italians need all, we need all the help we could get. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Because if it's not for you guys, they don't care anymore. You know? Make, make the pitch for NJTV. Go ahead. You can pitch. No, it's for NJTV. You should support it. It's great. You know what's wonderful about it? And you took it up where it was to a great level, Steve Adubato. It's because it's home. It's about Jersey. And we're, we're sandwiched between New York, right, John? We're sandwiched between Philly. And we're like the Rodney Dangerfield of states, I always say. No respect at all. I'll tell you. It's, I'll tell you. So it's great that we have our own great communication, uh, you know, whole adventure here on NJTV, brother. And, and it took another Italian, Neil Shapiro, to uh, uh, to bring us all together, our CEO and uh, Sh hey. Sh Shapiro. Is that right? No, it's Neil Shapiro brought us together. It's a foul at the end of the day, man. It's a foul. Hey, you know what, Steven? Too, Pizzarelli. I tell you, with Bucky, this this guy is a jazz legend. And I, and, and I he'll be performing you know, tonight. My love and respect for you. So this is a great night. We're very proud to be here. It's a great night for NJTV, for the PBS family, and and for whether you're Italian or not, uh, me, John, Joe, and, and Neil, all the Italians. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I love you. Joe yeah, Piscopo, ladies and gentlemen. We're here with uh, Bernie Flynn. Bernie, uh, the NJTV Gala, it's the second one, a big one, uh, raising money for a great cause, a great network. NJTV is everything that we need in New Jersey public programming. Uh, the fact that we are alive and well and delivering a great product is a testament to you. It's a testament to Neil Shapiro. It's a testament to the great team that we have at NJTV. And tonight's a celebration of that. We are all the way back from the transition that occurred a couple of years ago. We honored you last year. We're honoring Kent Manahan and Michael Aaron. The best. Year. Ken and Michael are the best. Well, their history. Their career history is New Jersey Public Television's history. So it's, it's terrific to have that connection to you know, the four decades of good, solid New Jersey public programming in this state. Uh, we were at risk a few years ago. We could have gone dark with your help. And, and as I mentioned, Neil Shapiro and the rest of the crew, uh, we bridged that gap. You know, we filled the void. And here we're, tonight, we're going to celebrate that. 
Bernie, I won't say that because he's uh, modest, but it was Bernie and a group of other um, very public-spirited, community-minded uh, corporate leaders in the state that decided to step up and be there for us. Why invest before we had the whole thing together in all seriousness? Because you're a smart businessman. Why then? Well, New Jersey is in the name of New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Company. And we are very proud of the fact that we were the first corporate underwriter of NJTV. We had faith that we were going to, you know, solve the challenges that we had at the time. And we knew we had a lot of talent in the state. But it wasn't all locked down. It wasn't locked down. So it was, to an extent, a leap of faith. But it's an investment in our future. And, you know, we want to be a good corporate citizen in this state. We know that the citizenry needs New Jersey public programming. We need the news programming. We need the creative programming, the arts, all of that. And, you know, the, the investment proved to be a good one. Paid off. It did. We're here with Bob Marino, the uh, leader at Horizon, uh, big supporter of NJ TV, uh, one of our trustees. Big night for uh, public broadcasting. Indeed it is, Steve, and Horizon's delighted to be here tonight. We're delighted to be a long-term supporter of NJ TV. Happy to be here, great turnout. NJ TV has a very special place in New Jersey. It's our TV station. When you want to know about what's going on in New Jersey, it's NJ TV. He's often referred to as the dean of the delegation, uh, the uh, media delegation, the State House Press Corps. But tonight, he's the honoree, one of the two honorees, along with Kent Manahan at the NJTV Gala. You are the man. Uh, they're calling me not the dean tonight. They're calling me a pioneer of public broadcasting. An icon. Uh, I'll take that from you. You're another icon. I'll take that from you. How proud are you of this operation about four years in? Very proud of it. Uh, I think we're doing a great job. It's a smaller operation than its predecessor, but the people are smart. They're all uh, cutting edge. They make good decisions. Uh, I think that NJTV really came of age about two months ago. The day of the governor's budget address, when he unveiled this radical new budget, uh, a pensions plan, and we stayed with that speech and reaction for two hours live and then re-aired it in prime time for two hours that night. And it was all first rate analysis and interviews and reaction. And I thought this is as good as state house coverage gets. And so that was that was the night I thought we really turned a corner. You know, Michael as he was talking about the days at NJN, he understands and appreciates that more than most. And for him to be a part of the NJTV News operation from day one and to say what he just said, you know, speaks volumes. All of us in public television just try to stand on your shoulders. Uh, you do just as well. And you're an icon every bit as much as I am. And they'll, they'll call you a pioneer one of these days. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Steve. People are saying how great NJTV is, how great the news is guy who runs it every day. Um, we have a great team. Thank you. Proud night. Very good. Good night. We had a great, great show here last year, and I think this is even better. Uh, it's a little, it's a little more intimate with Joe Piscopo emceeing and John Pizzarelli playing, but I think it's going to be a great night. Great crowd. We got a lot of people here, and it's, it's just nice vibe. And John Savidio and I, and the whole team, those of us who are connected as independent producers, we're real excited about NJTV coming right here to Newark. We're at NJ Pack right now. You understand that better than most. Why is it so important, John? Well, I, I, think, I think what Newark gives us um, is, what I try to describe it is, we had our infancy, we got it kind into our 10 and 11 year old, and now we're in adolescence. And I think what Newark is giving us is the next step forward into adulthood. We're in a place where we're in the center of the action. We're in the center of the political world. We have a studio in Trenton. We got a studio in Newark. We're soon going to have a studio in Jersey City, by the way. Is that right? That's correct. It's hard at, to keep up with this network. At New Jersey City University, we have a new studio going in in September. I'll tell you all, everyone, about that later. But Newark is like the center. I think it's going to give us the next jump we need to become a real vital piece of New Jersey and how we cover it. We're here with uh, the man who puts together NJTV News every night, Phil Alonji, the executive producer. Uh, Phil. Tell folks what it's like to put that great operation together and uh, those of us who appreciate it every night, uh, um, uh, what it really takes. 
Sure. I mean, I, I have a great staff. I'm really blessed in that way. And I'm a Jersey boy. I grew up, in, as you know, in, in Manalapan for most of my life. So I take what we do very seriously. And as, uh, you know, as being the only broadcaster that's over those 21 counties, uh, we have, you know, an extended responsibility to make sure that we're getting all of those stories out that the New York and Philly markets miss. Um, but what it takes, you know, it takes the same thing it takes to get anything done in Jersey. It takes a little bit of grittiness. It takes a little bit of, uh, you know, a sense of urgency and, and uh, you know, working with what resources we have. But the show has been growing leaps and bounds. And um, Tell folks about Mary Alice Williams. Mary Alice is like is the consummate professional, great colleague, uh, has a background after after she was a pioneer in broadcasting in, in a, you know, a, a vice president at CNN at times where women were not executives in media um, and then went into teaching. We snatched her from her tenured professorship at, at Sony, SUNY Purchase, and, and she works in the newsroom with our young staff, loves to teach them the fundamentals of what's missing now in TV and, you know, is a great person to have around. The gentleman you see on camera is someone you know. Uh, he's one of the stars in the PBS family, my colleague, my good friend, uh, my brother. Um, on the television side, because I don't have a brother otherwise. We don't uh, really like each other. Um, yeah, we love, no, we love each other, <laughs> Raphael P. Roman, um, the star of uh, Metro Focus, and also my colleague, my co anchor at uh, Capital Report, Raph, the NJ TV Gala. What does it mean to you, personally and professionally? Well, you know, personally, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a chance to meet all the people that we've been interviewing for 23 years, and they actually still like us after all these years. Which is shocking. <laughs> it's really shocking. Even some of the governors, the next governors still like us. So it's personally it's great to be here. Professionally, I mean, I guess for the same reason. You know, you have some of the best people on TV, some of the people who are in our profession working on NJTV, working in WN... Uh, w MDT, WLIW, right? <laughs> yeah, our parent company. <laughs> I can't remember anymore. But Raf Raphael, you also know Raphael in addition to the work he does on camera as an anchor and a newsman, you also know that he pitches for money, and we're not going to do that here, but I'm going to ask you this. For those who don't understand how important those dollars are to us being independent. Right. Everything, you know, we've talked about this so many times, you and me on ourselves, by ourselves. The independence that we have, you know, the liberty that we have, the ability not to have any strings attached, is because of your support, right? It's because people and, and some, some friendly corporations, some friendly foundations say, look, this is what you should do. As we've talked about before, you and I have worked together for over 20 years. Not one time has anybody said, you can't say that. Nobody's ever asked us. Nobody's ever told us, we want you to say this. And nobody's ever said, you shouldn't have said that. You know, we worked in other areas. We worked in other uh, places. It doesn't happen everywhere. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You can't beat that. And that's because people support us. That's because this is public television. You've been part of the NJTV family from the beginning. And um, as we enter it, like this the fourth year, as we finish up our fourth year, did you ever think that the network would be this successful, Deb? No. Well, we were all hopeful that it would be. But to see it come to fruition it takes it to a whole new level. And the amount of growth that we've had the amount of studio space that we have now, the uh, hardworking correspondents we have in the field for the news, it's amazing. And David, for you, uh, one of the best correspondents anywhere in the country, the idea of having our studio come here to Newark and someone who knows Newark, has covered Newark and loves this city the way you do, we're actually at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center right now, what does that mean to you? Well, it's, it's great, you're right. I mean, I love this city, been covering it since, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I think it's important not only for us, but also for the city. I mean, this city was home to NJN for so many years, and it's kind of a coming home for us, the new incarnation. And, uh, you know, we love Newark, and I hope, and I believe that it will, Newark will love us too. And finally, talk about the NJTV News operation. We're talking with Phil Alonji, executive producer. Um, talk about that team, talk about that product, and why it's so important to the state. Well, I will tell you this. You know, I was thinking today about how it was here when we started, and um, you know what was called NJ Today, the summer edition. Yeah, believe me, we're all trying to pull that one together. <laughs> right, exactly. And so just to see where we where we were, and where we are today is just you know a marathon. But where we're going to be in the next four years, I think, is going to be amazing, because I think where uh, NJN was when NJN was a real statewide network, I think we're going to do that and more. So I'm really optimistic about it, and I'm, I'm glad that we're here in Newark, because really Newark is, is where a lot of stuff's happening. Brenda and Tom, let me ask you this. Big supporters of NJTV, 
um, huge in the public television community. Why, from day one, a big supporter? Well, first of all, I'm just pleased to be part of the Board of Trustees, and Wells Fargo has been a supporter of the television station uh, since the inception of the TV station, probably because strategically it's important to the visibility, vitality, and I would say economic stability of, of the entire state. So we're just part to be, proud to be part of the supporters that are here tonight. And Tom, from the corporate community, I mean, you and, and Brenda and the others who are leaders in the corporate community, who also remember how powerful and important NJTV was and didn't know where things were going. How do you feel today about what we're doing in NJTV? Well, I go back to the very first board at New Jersey Network. So I go back to the very beginning and I saw that evolve into something very powerful. Then we had a little hiccup uh, and uh, WNET came in. I think people had some trepidation at that point in time, but I have to tell you that NJ, uh, WNET has done a great job of taking this uh, organization to a different level. Uh, I think it's, it's on a trajectory that's very good. We need it in this state. We need to have a, an, a media outlet that can talk about the state in different venues and different, uh, all the different disciplines of the state. They're doing it and they're doing it well. And finally, covering the whole state because you know the central and southern part particularly well. How important? Right. It, extremely important and you know one of the things that I've been most proud of is not just the broader visibility and the strategic focus of the station but really how financially sound it is and really how well run it is and that's as critically important. Brenda and uh, Brianna let me ask you this two stars of I know we don't call them stars in public television but you are correspondents thank you star correspondents of uh, NJTV News tonight's a big night the gala for NJ TV. I mean, what does this mean to you? Because you've worked on the commercial side, you know this side as well. This is fabulous. I actually got my start in television at NJN. So for me, this is like a phoenix. It's rising back up out of the ashes. It is wonderful to be part of it. And I think that the mission that NJTV serves is something that's different and apart from commercial television in a large sense. I think that the state needs focus. It needs someone to look at the politics in depth. Mm -hmm. It needs someone to look at the larger issues that are tougher to do uh, in a minute 20. We can give it to you in a longer format with a lot more nuance, and I think it's a, a wonderful thing to be part of. And Brianna, for you, this is something you've always wanted to do. Um, coming to Newark, the idea of the studio coming to Newark, significant? Well, sure. I mean, we need to have a presence here. This city, um, we've seen so much change, so much growth and revitalization. I think it's a perfect place, a perfect home for NJTV News. You know, we do statewide, so we're in every corner of the state um, every day. You'll find us reporters anywhere from Sussex County to Cape May County. Um, but it's nice to call Newark home um, because we have such a presence here already. There's a lot happening with the financial, um, you know, in the financial district, um, and it's just... Um, some place that anyone from New Jersey knows well um, and feels a little bit of, uh, it's, it's a part of them. I want to say something about another program, John, that the other day, and Neil, the other day that I saw that I know that Kent and Michael and everyone who is part of public broadcasting understands that that is why we do what we do. That is why NJTV is what it is. It wasn't one of our programs, but it was a special that NJTV did with the folks at the NJEA. The program was called Transformation and Remembrance, the journey from the Holocaust to the classroom. I sat there, and I, as I realized that the program had producers doing a documentary in which they, they journaled these New Jersey educators going to Europe to learn about the Holocaust in such a personal and profound way, and taking those experiences where they were in Berlin and Poland and Prague, and taking those experiences back into the classroom, because as I watched the program, and I watched those teachers learn about the Holocaust in ways that you will not find anywhere else on television, and then take those lessons into the classroom and teach about stepping up and stepping in when kids are in trouble, and bullying, and tolerance, and prejudice, and racism, and everything else that people talk about but don't really do anything about it. I thought, Neil, that's why you did it. That's why we did it. That's why we do what we do. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook 
at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Kent Manahan is one of our two honorees along with uh, Michael Aaron. What does this night mean to you? Well, for me, it was a celebration of public television in New Jersey. Steve, as you know, as a New Jersey native, there were times when people in the northern and southern part of the state didn't know anything about New Jersey. And New Jersey television, New Jersey public television was born out of that through an act of the legislature. So tonight, the tradition of public television continues. Started as New Jersey public television, then as NJN, and now as NJTV. It's really a night of celebration for New Jersey, about New Jersey. It's starting to uh, turn into the after party at the NJ TV Gala. I'm here with my colleague Joanna Gagas, who is the host of Life and Living on NJ TV and also the executive producer, the head of programming at the Caucus Educational Corporation. It's a great network, isn't it? It's a terrific network. I mean, it serves the people of New Jersey in a way that really no other network does, no, ever, no other network ever will. We are at the ground level, we are connected to the entire state. It's no longer the regions that are close to New York, close to Philadelphia. The entire state is represented, is covered, the issues that matter. And the programming runs the gamut. I mean, you have hardcore news to lifestyle programs and everything in between, the shows that you host, where we, we meet people from not just New Jersey, but the entire region. And so people in New Jersey now feel like they have a voice and they have a home. What makes uh, life and living uh, so special on uh, Saturday afternoons, NJ? TV. You also have a new time slot? We have a new time slot Sunday at 11 a.m. Plug, plug. Don't watch Face the Nation. Watch Life and Living with Joanna Gagas. Uh, Life and Living is a terrific program because, again, it represents who New Jersey is. We find New Jersey people who are doing amazing things, people who are trying to help their communities, people who are connected to arts and culture, to travel around the state, to food and dining. I mean, let's talk about it. It's not just New York where you can get terrific food and dining. It's, it's right here in New Jersey. We have some of the best chefs in the nation. And so, again, it's, it's a voice for New Jersey, and it, we're trying to represent what New Jersey is and that culture that New Jerseyans are all about. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by PNC Bank, Felician College, Virtua, MagnaCare, New Jersey Sharing Network, the Russell Berry Foundation, and by Choose New Jersey. Promotional support provided by NJ.com. Small news, big news, true Jersey. And by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Hi, I'm Peter Rooney. In 2006, I lost my father to renal disease. He was on the waiting list for a new kidney, but did not receive one in time. Unfortunately, so many like my father have lost their lives while waiting for a life-saving organ. At New Jersey Sharing Network, we're committed to saving and enhancing people's lives through organ and tissue donation and by informing people about this important decision. Because you can make a difference and save a life.